Okay, and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking apart this big microwave. This is a Whirlpool. And it is a big one, full size. And um, I got it, you know, people throw these things out. I got it off the curb. I've tested it out. It's completely dead in the water. It doesn't do anything at all when you plug it in. So I'm just going to be harvesting it for parts. There will be a lot of parts in there that still work. Like the transformer, you certainly get the plug off of it. And uh, I'm not interested in the magnetron because those are super dangerous outside of the microwaves. But there will be little AC motors and uh, the blower fan for sure. Up here there's a double squirrel cage um, blower fan that is uh, yeah, that's something I want to play with. Now this one is, uh, it's got a curiosity. Somebody started, it looks like somebody tried to start fixing this one or somebody was um, ambitious enough to take a look inside so I'm curious to see what I find in there um, but I, I'm look I'm probably gonna find something that is all burned through around the power supply and uh, well anyway let's get the, all the panels off and take a look inside there okay I'm starting with the bottom panel it's kind of funny I want to read this here it says to clean the filter in other areas to avoid grease buildup and it's covered in grease and the inside boy the filters here are packed full of grease really slimy and you can see the inside there packed full of grease I think that they were running a fryer under the microwave like the cooktop would be under there and uh, they were using the fryer to I mean the um, the range to um, suck all the fumes away from the fryer and they all went up in there. Look at all this grease. I mean it's nasty in there. Look at this. Anyway, what we got here is that is the little AC motor that turns the turntable and I'll be saving that. I've, you know, I've never looked inside one of those. I gotta break one of those open to see the uh, gearing in there. I don't know. I just i um, curious about that, but uh, there's the, <laughs> well, one of the bulbs is missing. Now, I always save this glass, this neat diffusing glass, underneath there. I don't know why, but I'll come up with a use for those. And so, I will just take these parts off and then move on to the rest of the case. Okay, so now we're getting a good look inside there. There, right there on the top, and this of course is the front of it, there is the double blower fan that I was talking about. And this sucks up from the bottom, and then you got to imagine the top still being on here. And then it blows it through the um, this filter here, which is absolutely horrifyingly dirty. And then through the um, through the front there, which was, you know, this thing here. And so, yeah, my boy wants to make a curtain fan for above the door, the type of thing that keeps bugs out, and so so we'll see if we can make one out of this. I, we have this one, and we have another one exactly like it from another microwave, and uh, we'll see if we can kind of mount it into that somehow and uh, try to make a curtain fan. But uh, otherwise, you got your temperature sensor there, and uh, this right here, I've forgotten what it is, but we'll find out in a moment. And then down there is the uh, the good stuff. The magnetron is in there. Uh, where is it? Interesting. Um, we'll find out. But the transformer's in there and so on. But I've got to get more stuff off to uh, take a look at that, so let's do that. Okay, a little farther into it. Now looking down in there, I confused that, that is the magnetron, I confused that with the transformer. And of course the transformer is back here. And I was not able to see it until I got that cover off. Now, the reason why I thought that was the transformer at first glance is because the magnetron is usually mounted to this interior wall and it fires through that wall. 
in into the, the microwave cavity, the cooking area. So the microwave usually come through that wall over there. But this one is not connected. And it appears, I don't know, we'll figure it out more when we get down there, but if, it kind of looks like it's going through the bottom. Let's just see here, underneath. I'll try to flip this up. See this here? Now, I took those screws out right there. That's what was holding the magnetron in. And then we have this kind of a scoop here on the underside of it. It's as though they were having the microwaves go up into the cooking area rather than through the wall. And would explain why they have this little contraption underneath. Um, the last one I took apart, that was on the top. So, this is interesting. Anyway, we'll get um, we'll get the rest of that stuff out, out of there and uh, take a better look at it. Alright, and quickly here, I just wanted to show the back side of the panel. The control panel. Whoops. Okay, there we go. And in here, you have the circuitry that controls the whole microwave. And uh, also that little thing right there, it looks like a circle. That is the bell that dings when your food is ready. And uh, also, inside of these, usually, this little thing that's packed away here, that is for technicians to, um, there's a schematic on there that shows uh, how to troubleshoot, how to test the uh, circuit board and different components, and so on. And they're usually in there. Uh, okay, so that's the back of the uh, control panel. Okay, moving right along, uh, we find a nice, a nice cooling fan in here. Look at this. So um, that is meant to, if you look through it there, you can see the magnetron fins, the cooling fins for the magnetron. And uh, I think this is really just to cool the magnetron. It has a port back here. But I think it would be, well, maybe it's supposed to be cooling the transformer as well. And then we have another opening over here. Not completely sure what it's doing, but here's a look at it. Now here is something I want to note. This is a very um, strong capacitor. And uh, you've got to be, when you're taking stuff like this apart, you've got to be really careful about these things. Because this thing could still be holding a charge from the last time you plugged it in. And um, seeing how big it is, I mean, it can really give you a really good shock. It can uh, really mess you up. So you got to stay very clear of um, the terminals there. Or discharge it with, you know, stand way back and uh, put something across the terminals. A big, long rod of some kind. Anyway, uh... Uh, yep, we'll take out this fan and take out these components and see what's left. Okay, getting in deeper here, uh, here's the end of this mystery. And yeah, the magnetron here is a downward firing magnetron. It fires down into that hole, and then the uh, microwaves are guided through that channel I showed before. This is, you know, microwave right here. So that microwave, uh, the magnetron fires down into that channel and it's guided through there and then up. So it fires up through the food. That's pretty neat. Uh, anyway, okay, let me take all this stuff out. Okay, and so here we go. It's just an empty shell now. And, uh, I've got all the components out. Some of these things I'll save. I'll certainly be saving that fan. And I'll be saving that fan. And try to make a curtain fan out of it. Possibly it and another one side by side. I think that I'll probably try to mount it in its actual mount here. 
because I've got, you know, like two sides of it, it went right there. Right there is where it mounted. As you can see where the slime is from the grease. Of course, you have to clean this stuff up. But you have two sides of it there. And then you can use... I have to work in the actual vent here. This would be what would be facing down from the top of a door frame. I hope everybody knows what a curtain fan is. You see them like at theme parks to keep the bugs out of the pavilions. But we're going to try to make one of those. We'll see what we can do. And I will be keeping the transformer. Because there's a lot of fun things you can do with those. Uh, I will not be keeping the um, magnetron because these things are very dangerous. If I start playing with one of those I'll probably get hurt. I am not going to be let's see, I am not going to be taking apart the door or taking off the door because there's not much in there but I did bring another door out this is what's in there um, now is not the glass not the glass or the plastic that is saving you from the microwaves it's actually this screen the screen that you can see through the glass that's your waveguide that keeps it in Speaking of which, you know, here's another look at that guide for the microwaves that are firing straight down into that hole. And, you know, when I look down in there, I don't see anything but steel. And I don't really know how waveguides work, so maybe that's all you need. And, um... The curious thing I see here is that we also have this big indentation here. And this is this thing is spot welded on so I can't get it off to see in there. But I wonder what that's all about. <laughs> and then of course the uh, AC motor there was for turning this thing which must have to do with distribution of the microwaves. It's probably something I, well, I don't want to go into theory because so many people would correct me. But that AC motor was obviously spinning this thing, and on the inside would have been turning a turntable to spin the food. Very, very interesting. And sure, if anybody knows what's going on in there, let me know. Uh, as I state at the end of these, I am not an appliance technician, this is just a hobby, and no, I don't know what I'm doing, so all those people that are going to tell me that I don't know what I'm doing, I already know that. This is just a hobby, it's just a curiosity, I like to mess with these things, and as my kids get older, you know, my boy is 15 now, this is the type of thing that he's into, so it's good, because it's the type of thing that I'm into, and we'll mess with this kind of stuff together, and I'm always, I kind of go overboard. But most of this stuff will be thrown away. I'll just save a few things and uh, um, satisfy my curiosity. There's always a surprise in these things. And the surprise this one, this time, was the downward firing magnetron. Really pretty neat. Uh, anyway, yeah, this was the Whirlpool. And I've got a couple more. I've got this one over here. This is an Oster. And... Um, Sooner or later I'll get into that one. I've also got a little tiny apartment size um, GE that I don't expect to be too interesting. But the Oster might have a surprise. I don't know. Anyway, that's wrap that wraps it up. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.